3D echocardiography, it's definitely a hot topic. But why do we actually try to image the heart in 3D in the first place? And how did we get to where we are today? Well, this is actually the true reason why there is something like 3D echocardiography, gynecology, and prenatal ultrasound, which was able to generate images like this. Now, isn't this fascinating to look at the different facial expressions of the fetus? Well, this really sparked the interest in using 3D in other modalities as well. But before I go on, let me just mention that an Austrian company was strongly involved actually in the beginnings of 3D ultrasound and probably also 3D echocardiography. Paul Kretz was the founder of the Kretz company, and in 1989, they released the scanner called Combison 330, which generated the first 3D images at that time of fetus. Of course, they developed much more over the time, and then they were finally acquired by a Korean company called Medison, which was then acquired by General Electric. So you see, even in modern scanners, you've got a lot of the technology or actually uh, developments included that were of course, pioneered by Paul Kretz in the early years. Of course, at that time, there were also developments in creating 3D images of the heart, which was a little bit more difficult because the heart moves. So it's, of course, much more difficult to acquire so many uh, images in such a short time. But the first work that was done was in creating so-called wireframes. Here you would kind of integrate several views into a 3D data set and then generate, as in this example, a crude reconstruction of the left ventricle. Now, this got better and better and more and more refined, uh, but it still wasn't good enough to really look at structures of the heart. The next step was to generate special transducers that were able to acquire 3D data sets. First, they used position localizers, then later on, special motors that would advance the probe in a certain direction. And then what was created was a so-called TECT probe, or we also called it lobster tail probe, which had the advantage that you would acquire parallel images while the transducer was moved along an encasing which was placed in the esophagus. I still remember we used this probe and it was kind of um, a very thick probe. Patients often had problems to swallow them, but the image quality we got was actually fantastic and not much worse than what we get today it was the only difference that it sometimes took um, days to really reconstruct them. So you would start the reconstruction process in the evening and you know at the end of the next day, you would finally get a good reconstruction, for example, of the mitral valve. Anyway, this was just the beginning of 3D echocardiography and certainly we've really moved a long way from these early days. The next big step in development was that of so-called matrix array probes, which allowed you to acquire an entire pyramidal volume and thereby a complete data set with basically a few heartbeats. And this opened actually the window to perform live 3D imaging. In other words, you could see the 3D image immediately while you were imaging. The scanners at that time, of course, were huge. There was a lot of processing power that was necessary. Imagine you have to create uh, hundreds of pyramidal volumes within you know, a short period of time. And this, of course, was a technical challenge. And the images we got weren't so bad, actually. Of course, they were far below what you could achieve with a normal 2D image. But it allowed us, for example, to quantify uh, the area in mitral stenosis. And we performed a study at that time with such a system. Uh, it was very fascinating. But the machines were too big. They were too impractical. And at that time, they did not really have any big clinical penetration. With the advances in computer technology and miniaturization, it was now possible to create transducers with a smaller footprint and move a lot of the processing into the transducer. Thereby, the frame rates increased, the image quality increased, and basically, uh, we got to a point where we can now really think of using 3D in daily clinical practice. Mm -hmm.